it's Amy with A2Z Stamping and today I wanted to show you how to make this adorable little card box. So this box, um, it opens up and it holds, it's the perfect size to hold note cards. So if you want to give someone a set of note cards, and I actually, these aren't decorated yet, um, but I'm just showing you, these are our note cards in here. You can fit a bunch of them in here. One, two, three. I have five note cards. I have a ton of envelopes in there right now, but you could fit a whole bunch more of note cards. But this cute little box holds these note cards. It has this little top and you decorate it however you want. I use designer series paper on mine, but I want to show you how easy this is because you could totally use any designer series paper you have and any stamp sets and decorations that you want to use. Um, I'm actually planning to fill my boxes with treats, with candy treats, um, because I'm going to give these, I have a couple um, people I want to give these to and I liked the nice bright colors. So I thought I would show you because they're so easy to make. All right, so what you need for this is there's a quite a bit of uh, scoring uh, with your trimmer, but after that, it's they're really easy to put together. So you'll need several pieces of paper. So you'll need one piece of designer series paper or something that you've stamped yourself. And this is cut at four inches by 10 and a half inches. And I'm using designer series paper from the best root uh, suite, the designer series paper there. It's the cutest paper, like this side has um, the bicycles, but I loved this side with the pineapple punch and the mango melody. And it looks like it has um, the black and um, whisper white in there. So I love that. I just wanted something nice and bright and summery. So one piece of designer series paper. And then you'll need three pieces of cardstock. So you need one that's cut. You need... So I want to make sure I grab the correct one. These look to be the same. Do they look the same? They do look the same. So I need to check these. You need one cut at... Oh, and I thought I would show you too. So this one I did in Pineapple Punch. I'm actually doing this one the opposite in Mango Mel Melody. So I, I'm going to actually check my sizes as I tell you what sizes you need. So you need one piece of cardstock cut at 10 by 6 and a quarter. So let me just go ahead and open and make sure that's what I've got here. So this one is cut at 10 by six and a quarter. Yep, that's what this is. So 10 by six and a quarter. Then you need a second piece that's cut at 10 and a quarter, which this is not. Okay, so that's what I need. I need a piece cut. That, let me grab another piece of Mango Melody. Oh, goodness me. Okay, so I need a second one cut at 10 and a quarter. So let me do that. 10 and a quarter by six and five sixteenths. There we go. Okay, so see one's just a little bit bigger and a little bit wider than the other one. And then I need one cut at one and a half, and that should be this one right here. One and a half by ten and a half. Is that what this is? Yep. Okay, good. That was cut correctly. All right, I just wanted to check those. Okay, so did you guys get that? And all the dimensions were at the bottom of the screen, so that should be all uh, correct for you. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start with our piece that is, let's actually, let's start with our designer series paper. And go ahead and put your cutting blade at the bottom because we don't want that at all. We're gonna just be um, scoring, there we go. All right, so the first thing we wanna do is we wanna score this at one and one sixteenth, and it's easier if we do it on this side so 1 16th is actually the first little nod, little mark after the one. So we're going to score it at 1 and 1 16th. And remember with designer series paper, you don't want to press too hard because we don't want to rip the paper. And now we're just going to flip it around. So you guys see that? So now I just flipped it around this way. And now we're going to score it at 4 and 7 eighths. So the, to do eighths, it's the second, so the larger one. So 7 eighths is the last one. 4 and 7 eighths. Okay, and then we're going to do five and 15 sixteenths. So it's the little tiny notch right before the six. And then we're going to do nine and 13 sixteenths, nine and 13 sixteenths. So if you're not sure we're 13, you just count each little mark or it's three back from the 10. So 13 sixteenths. All right. And then we're going to just flip it this way and we're going to score it. Let's see. We're going to score this one at Oh, actually, we're not. What am I thinking? So that's all. Just those one, two, three, four score marks. Okay, guys. Now we're going to grab the piece that is 10 by six and a quarter. So the one that's just a little bit shorter. There we go. And we're going to go ahead and score this at one inch. So let's score this side first. This is to make our bottom box. 
And since this is cardstock, you can score it a little bit harder. So we'll flip it around and we're gonna score it at four and three quarters. So remember again, this is the bottom box or the inside box. Four and three quarters, five and three quarters, and nine and a half. And then we'll turn and rotate it and we'll score it at one inch. Right there. Okay, so this is what our bottom box looks like. Standard box, just like normal. And let's go ahead and set that aside and we'll score this one. Now this bigger piece, we're gonna score it at one and one sixteenth. So this is the top and it has to be a little bit bigger so it can fit over the top of that bottom box. Oops, you guys, I totally just scored that the wrong way. We wanna do one and one sixteenth here. That's okay, we need that at the bottom anyway. So one and one sixteenth. There we go. Then we're gonna flip it all the way around and we're gonna score this at four and seven eighths. So the same that we did the designer series paper. So four and seven eighths, five and 15 sixteenths, nine and 13 sixteenths. I know the measurements are kind of strange, but that's what we needed in order for the note cards to fit perfectly in it. And then we would have, if you, if I hadn't have scored that first, you would have just turned it this way and scored at one and one sixteenth. So we didn't mess anything up by doing that. Okay. And then finally, this little strip we did, this, this, this is going to be the belly band. We're going to score it at one and one sixteenth. Flip it around. And now we're going to score at four and seven eighths. Are these measurements all sounding familiar? They should. Five and fifteenth sixteenths. And nine and thirteen sixteenths. It's just that bottom box that had different measurements because everything else needed to be bigger so they could fit around it. All right, and that's all we need this for. So now let's just go ahead and burnish everything. So I'm gonna grab my phone folder and I'm just gonna burnish all of these. So the belly band, you should have four little marks. Sorry guys, I keep getting off screen. It's a little dark. It's it's kind of gloomy out and so it's making it really dark in here. So just go ahead and set everything aside once you get done. Okay, this one, let's go ahead and do our bottom. And then we'll do our four one. Two, three, and four. And it doesn't really matter which end your one inch this way went, because when you make the box, it's not gonna make a difference at all. So if when you do yours, if it's backwards, you'll see it doesn't matter, okay? And let's go ahead and burnish this one. This is the hardest part, I promise, of the whole card. It's just all of this scoring and cutting. Okay, and the bottom piece. All right, and if you've made boxes before, watch my videos, you know it's a standard box. So we're gonna just cut up all of these little um, lines at the bottom and we wanna notch this out. I always say cut the little pie piece out just to make little tabs. I think it they um, the box comes together a little bit nicer when you make tabs. So just cut these up and then cut the little pie piece out. So see, these will just pop right out. And this little tiny rectangle on the end, we're just gonna take this off completely. Okay, so there's one, and we're gonna do the exact same thing to this one. See, this one's opposite. It's just because of the end that I put the one inch, and it makes no difference. This little rectangle is coming off completely. And then again, cut and notch up. Make the little pie piece. Cut these out, they should just pop right out. And another little pie piece. And a little pie piece. You don't have to do the little pie pieces, but it just makes your box fold and look much nicer. Okay, that's all of that. And now we'll put the little boxes together. So in order to do that, this little skinny flap here, 
you're gonna wanna put your adhesive right here. So you could use snail adhesive, but I find snail doesn't work quite as well on boxes and stuff. I would use fast use, but we don't have that anymore. That was my favorite. So now my go-to for boxes and bags and stuff is using tear and tape. You could also use multi-purpose glue. That's a really strong glue, but I find the tear tape, tear and tape works really well. So we're gonna cut, or we're gonna grab a piece and get it on here. So again, this is the inside of the box. Fold this little flap down here and put this piece on right here. Oh, and I need a little bit more. I tore that a little bit too short. Okay, and give it a really good press. You could even use your bone folder. And we're also gonna stick some, this flap right here. So not the one right next to this, but this one right here. Push it up and we're gonna stick some right there. And I like to do, let's go with two rows just to get the whole thing. One and two. Okay, and again, let's give these a nice press down. Okay, and then we can peel these off. So it should go one, two. They should peel right off. And these ones right here, let's go ahead and peel these off. Oh, come on. My fingernails are a little bit short for me right now, and so I can't grab anything. Okay. Oh, for crying out loud. There we go. Let me grab this piece right here. I promise you guys, tear and tape is not hard. I don't know why I am struggling with it. I'm just gonna blame my fingernails. Okay. But if the hardest part of this box is getting the tear and tape off, well then we're all winning, right? Okay, so all we need to do, so keep this side pressed down and go ahead and it, if you just press it flat on here, it'll line up and go ahead and give it a press. And then for your end, go ahead and push the two little flaps in. Push the one with the sticky down. Make sure your box is nice and straight and then line this one up and press. And there, see, you got one little box and now we just need to do that to this, this one here. So again, see if we can do this a lot quicker this time. Tear and tape. Get a nice press and on this one right here, so the one furthest away, tear and tape. I will say one nice thing about the tear and tape is it is easy to tear it apart, which is nice because you get adhesive exactly where you want it. Okay, give that a nice press. Look how much easier that was this time. I'm gonna give it a nice press and then get an end up. There we go. And this guy right here, give it a press. But without having fast views anymore, we gotta work with what we've got, right? All right, so let's push this box down. Should line right up and press, press, press. And then we're gonna put these the two little flaps in, the sticky one down, and again, line our box up and press. Okay, so now the important part here is figure out which one is your lid and which one's your bottom. So. Figure out which one one will fit. There we go. So I know which one's my top and my bottom. I'm actually gonna leave it like this for right now so I don't mess them up. Okay, now I'm gonna put, I'm actually gonna grab some ribbon. So I am using the Whisper White Classic Weave Ribbon. And you just want a little tiny piece to be your little handle. So cut off a little piece. And I'm gonna grab a glue dot. And I'm gonna stick one on this end right at the very end of it. Oops, and I'm gonna stick one on this end. I got a glue dot on my thumb here, so I'm gonna stick it on this one. There we go. And you want it to go right here at the top. Figure out right where the center is. It doesn't really matter what ribbon you use, it's so cute. And this is gonna be what pulls the box open, like so, okay? So stick that on. Now we're gonna wrap our designer series paper around. I think we forgot to burnish this, so I'm actually just gonna do it with my fingers, since there's only four. 
There we go. And this will wrap right around and it's going to line up evenly with the top. So I like to fold it around first. Let's see which pieces. Okay. And figure out which you want to be a front. And I want it to seal this toward the back. So what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to stick just a tiny bit of snail adhesive. And I'm doing snail because I want to be able to move this around. So I'm going to put some snail there and I'm going to put some snail along the top and then all the way down this side. Okay. And I'm going to start, let's see, right. Nope. I'm going to go this way. There we go. So I'm going to line it up perfectly with the, okay. And again, this wraps around even with the top. Get it wrapped around, wrapped around, and then this is my front here. And this should go right over, and it should line up perfectly. There we go. All right, there we go. All right, so there is my designer series paper. All right, now I'm gonna grab my one and a quarter inch circle punch. And this is what I'm going to use to put this little handles in here. So now I can pull my bottom out because I know which is the top and which is the bottom. And just go about halfway, make a little half moon and make sure you're right in the center. And go ahead and punch. And then if you just line it up with the bottom, you can line your circle up exactly so you can get it pretty much exactly the same. Let's see, right like so. Okay, so there I've got those. And now I'm gonna grab my two and a quarter inch circle punch, and I'm gonna do the same on this one, but this time it's gonna go at the top. And let me show you here what I'm talking about. See up here, these guys right up here. If you don't have a two and a quarter inch or you don't have a one and a quarter inch, use whatever size you have. I would go with the biggest you have for the inside and then, you know, whatever size thumb holes you wanna make. So again, halfway punch and halfway and punch. That looks a little bit crooked, there we go. Okay, and go ahead and close these up. Remember, they store flat. I store all of my punches actually in a drawer, and I store them this way. So it's quite nice being able to stack them that way. All right, then what I wanted to do is sometimes it's cute to put something right here. So I grabbed the Swirly Bird stamp set and the Swirly Framelits. What are they called? Swirly really something swirly scribbles framelits dies because I just wanted it to be kind of whimsical and I cut out one of these big guys and one of these smaller little swirlies in the pineapple punch cardstock so I've got those right here so here's one and here's another one just fun little uh, scribbles and I want to stick them right on here so I'm gonna grab my multi-purpose glue I always have two of them. I store one with the thin end down and one with the thick end down. So the glue is always right there and ready to go for me. Grab my silicone mat here and I'm gonna just stick the multi-purpose glue. This dr seems to dry. This is a very strong adhesive. It dries really quick. And this will make it so it doesn't move around since it's got all these little bits. Let me get this one here. You could use your fine tip glue pen um, on this. I mean, if all you had was snail, I suppose you could make it work, but you'll end up with glue in between. Okay, and so let's go ahead and stick this little guy on the front here. Just thought it was cute and added some whimsy. And I'm gonna stick this guy on the back. I'm gonna actually turn it this way because I, I feel like this one looks like a pumpkin when it's this way. So I'm gonna turn it this way. So it doesn't look like that. There we go. But you could dec you can decorate your little box with anything you want. Any Anything you've got would be super cute. All right, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put the belly band on our lid here. So what did I do with that? It's right here. And this again will fit on. And again, I want it to close so that this the opening is facing the back. So I'm gonna stick some adhesive on one more time. Okay, there we go. So this is the back. So I want it to go like this. So right in the center, 
I'm going to start it here. And then wrap it around. And again, it's just your standard belly band. Stick my finger in there to get it on there. There we go. Okay. My mark looks off a little bit. I wonder if, let me check this, you guys. If you're having that same problem, check your measurement real quick. So my belly band, I wanna make sure I actually scored it where I was telling you guys to score it because that wasn't fitting quite right. Let's see, one and one sixteenth. That would be this end right here. One and one sixteenth. Yep, yeah, got that, that's correct. And then turn it around four and seven eighths. So that's almost to the end here. Yep, that's right. And five and 15 sixteenths is almost to the end. And that is right there, that looks right. And nine and 13 sixteenths. Let's see, yep, that's all right. Okay, so. I just gotta pull it a little bit tighter. Where'd you go, Lid? There we go. And actually, that looks a little bit better anyway. I don't edit out all this stuff because I want you guys to see what to do if you're having the same issues. Oh, for crying out loud. I'm gonna stick more adhesive on here. That's part of my problem. I need it to stick down to the box so it won't move. Okay. So this goes on like so. fingers aren't quite long enough to reach up in there. Do you see why I don't like working with the snail though on the boxes? It's not super strong for this kind of a thing. I, my fingers aren't long enough to reach in there. There we go, there we go, there we go. Okay, who thought they would have so I would have so much trouble with a belly band for real? All right, you guys. That's not closing toward the back, but you know what? I'm going to live with it. All right, there we go. All right. Oh my gosh, who thought that was going to take so long? I had zero problems at all wrapping this one around. Okay, but who knows? Who can figure, right? I'm actually going to close it up. That might help a little bit. All right. All right. Then the last thing you need to do is I'm, I thought it, I wanted to um, actually let's wrap the ribbon around real quick. Hopefully we won't have as much trouble with that. So figure out exactly how much ribbon you need to go around the whole thing where it can line up perfectly. So you want to cut it just where it lines up exactly. And I find this that the ribbon goes on best with glue dots. So again, let's grab a glue dot and a glue dot, and we don't want it to, um, we don't want the seam to match up right in the center. So I'm actually gonna line it up right here, which will hopefully help keep this closed up a little bit better anyway. So go ahead and wrap your ribbon all the way around. And if you want to, you could put glue dots around the ribbon, but I don't find that necessary. There we go, so there's our ribbon. Look at that, something finally worked correct. Then I wanted to put something really cute in the center. So I just grabbed the little swirl from the Swirly Bird stamp set and I'm gonna stamp it in Pineapple Punch. Right here on a scrap piece of Whisper White cardstock. Now this video is like super long, but that's okay. Like I said, I want you guys to see how I fix things too. Okay, and we're just gonna stamp that right there. Isn't that so cute? And let me 
clean this off just on my Xiaomi here. All clean. Close up my pineapple punch. And I'm gonna grab that one and a quarter inch circle punch one more time and line this guy up and it will punch right out. Let's see, actually, let's go this way. This isn't an exact circle, but I thought it still worked fine for this. Oops, down a little bit, there we go. Cute, okay. Actually, oh, what am I doing? Now I've lost my mind, I need two of them. Let me do one more. I want one for the front and the back. Scribble, close it up. Punch this guy out too. And punch it out, there we go. And I'm gonna grab a dimensional. Oh, dimensionals, where did you go? Of course, I can't find them. Here they are. That goes right here. Okay, oops, well these aren't even my dimensionals, but that's okay, these will work. These are mini dimensionals, but it'll still work. I'm gonna do a top and a bottom, and a top and a bottom. Actually, these will probably even work better. On my sample car, uh, box, I did regular size dimensional, so just use whatever you have. And go ahead and peel the backs off. Didn't get that one. I need my fingernails to grow. It's a little too short and I can't work with my crafting supplies. There we go. Okay, and one's gonna go on the front. So, actually, I'm gonna stick that one on the back. Stick this one on the front, and I'm gonna stick this one on the back. Okay, and then, to finish it off, I just wanted to put a few embellishments, which you can see here. So I grabbed the Best Root, what are they called? Embellishments? I'm not even sure what they're called. Enamel shapes. It's at the bottom of the screen though. So it comes in several colors and one of the colors is pineapple punch and obviously mango melody. And you get these like arrows and stars. These, I don't know, they kind of could be balloons or an exclamation point top. I don't know. And then little dots. So I'm going to go ahead and put, let's see, one, some of these at the bottom. These embellishments actually are meant to coordinate with the Best Root Suite. So they go really well with that, with um, the suite that this paper is from. So we've got three of these and I'm gonna put a star right in the center of my swirl. And there we go. So there's my box. Even though I said it was so simple, I promise you guys they are. And you see, you could do these up in a zillion different colors and whatever you wanna do. Isn't that so sweet? I think it's a lot of fun. So anyway, I hope you stuck it out with me with this video and that you'll subscribe to my YouTube channel and check me out on Facebook. My group is A2Z Stamping. Thanks guys. Bye.